Hey guys, I'm Tony Woods and I'll be taking you through the Sisney Guitar Method Fundamental Chord Shapes book number one. Okay guys, so uh, let's go past the jazz solo now. Um, and it looks like we are wrapping up the key of D in your book on pages 70 and 71, right about in there. There's a little bit of a discussion about substituting the fifth and sixth string power chords for chords that you don't know yet. Um, inevitably, there are hundreds and hundreds of chords, and maybe you're looking through tabs or a songbook, a favorite song of yours, and uh, you're coming across chords that you haven't learned yet, and therefore you kind of have to stop at that point and you can't really play the song. Um, uh, 70 and 71 teaches you how to substitute a chord that you do know for a chord that you don't know. And this is uh, not always the best choice, but at least it'll let you finish playing through a song instead of giving up on a song because you don't know what uh, E7 sharp 9 is, okay? There are some fancy chords out there. So here's what you do. Uh, the, basically, the only thing you need to do is take the name of the chord uh, and forget about everything else except for the letter. So if we go back and compare our jazz solo, well you, you have it on page 70 there. The top two lines are the jazz solo chords uh, that were weird. The top line is the D major 7, um, there is the B7, E minor 7, A7, A7 augmented. Okay, when you play a power chord, which is our fifth and sixth string movable chord shape, it doesn't matter if the music says it's a seventh chord, a minor chord, a major chord, an augmented chord. Nothing matters except for the letter of the chord. So, for instance, in that first chord where you have a D major seven, the only thing that matters if you need to substitute that is the D. That's all you need to know. So instead of playing the fancy D major 7, if you don't know it, you could just play a D power chord. Now that doesn't work for the D major chord. That won't work because if a chord is major or minor, it'll sound different. So don't use your open chord shapes as substitutions. Use your power chords as substitutions. So if you didn't know what a D major 7 was, you could play your fifth string D and that would be a substitution and it would work. It would sound good, okay? So next we had the B7. If you didn't know what a B7 was, switch to a power chord and just play the letter, the B power chord. E minor seven, we don't know what that is, just play an E power chord. A7, if you don't know what that is, play an A power chord, okay? Now the only thing that does matter is if it's a sharp or a flat, then you have to remember to make your chord sharp or flat. So for instance, in the second line, we've got the D major 7, which we could substitute with a fifth string D. The B7, which we can substitute for a B power chord. Then we've got a B flat 7, so you need to make sure it's a B flat power chord. If it was minor or seven or nine or augmented or any fancy name, all you need to know is the letter and whether it's flat or sharp. So B flat seven becomes a B flat power chord. E minor seven becomes an E power chord. So on and so forth. That is what that page is all about. Um, and you might, when you write the substitution on your particular piece of music, you may put that the D power chord with a five above it and circle it so you remember it's a fifth string D power chord. Um, if you see the E minor seven, for instance, you might write an E with a six circled above it so that you remember it's a six string E. Okay, very, very simple, um, pretty unknown way to substitute things for beginners, but if you can get a hold of that concept, you'll be able to play through just about any piece of music. It won't have quite the same flair, but at least you'll be able to play through the song and not have to give up on it because it's a chord you've never seen before. Hope that makes sense. 
Good luck, practice hard, have a great day. See you at our next lesson.